What's up, my wizards? It's Dev from SBNTG. We like magic, and today we're covering the talk of the town for like the last week. You know, it's been a while since I covered somebody else's deck, but it's also been a really long time since a deck this cool came along. So today, Rainbow Lich, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to it. Hi, I'm a madman. I'm a lunatic. Bad man, poison the water in your community. My, my name, name is Kefka, and I'll wreck ya. Pause for the break, after which I'll disrespect ya. This deck has a lot of names. Rainbow Lich is my favorite by a lot, but I've also heard it referred to as five color control, um, five color ramp, even Lich combo, because it's kind of a combo deck. We'll get to that, but they're all referring to the same deck, which is the brainchild of one Mr. Ali Trazi, who's actually been building these weird five color rampish decks for years now, in both modern and standard, but he broke through at the SCG Classic in Dallas last weekend and actually produced a first place finish <laughs> with this five color Lich's Mastery deck of all things, and ever since then, everyone's been talking about it, but I've seen some gameplay of it, I've seen some, some Reddit commentary on it, but I haven't actually seen too much actual, like, you know, in-depth discussion of the deck on the internet, so that's my job today, let's check this weird thing out. The card that gives the deck its name is the Lich's Mastery that Ollie's playing three copies of here, and I love that this card just came along and smashed Standard to pieces, you know. I have made no secret the Lich's Mastery is like one of my favorite cards in Standard right now. I've, I've been in love with the card since the day it previewed during spoiler season. I actually did a deck sort of similar in concept to this last season. Um, already, so I feel slightly ahead of the curve here. Now, once you actually do get a mastery down, it allows you to do some really crazy stuff, apart from just extending the game forever. It's actually really tough to lose a game once you actually get a mastery on the battlefield, but there's a lot of crazy tricks this affords us, and it turns anything that gains us life into straight-up card advantage, which we're doing a lot of in this deck. I felt like Mastery was on the verge of playability for a really long time here, but a new card came along in Guilds that gives us a trick that really pushes the deck over the verge and into the actual realm of playability, and that new trick is Chance for Glory. This is just ridiculous and hilarious. At the same time, we have multiple ways of recurring this spell in our deck, and once we cast it, we basically get a three-mana time walk, and if Mastery's down, we can't lose the game. And it is cool that it gives all your creatures indestructible. Now, the deck doesn't play any main deck creatures, but it plays a few creatures in the sideboard, and you'll sometimes get them in game one. More on that a little bit later, so that can even be relevant in game one with no main deck creatures. But it's not that important. What's important here is the taking of, of extra turns, and sometimes you can take multiple extra turns in the same game. In fact, there are times where I've seen Ollie take up to three or four extra turns um, in a row with this card. And we can do that in part thanks to the Marari Conjecture, which we're playing a three of in the deck. This doesn't just get back Chance for Glory, but that's definitely the coolest thing that it gets back. And obviously on Chapter 3 turns, you can double Chance for Glory and take two extra turns and not lose the game if you have a Lich's Mastery out. So that's, that's crazy, but this also recurs all kinds of other stuff in the deck that we'll get to in just a moment. But just know that the Marari Conjecture is probably the second or third most important card in the entire deck because it's what's really giving us all of the crazy tricks, all the ability, um, all the abilities to recur, all of these, you know, crazy instants and sorceries over and over again, take extra turns with chance for glory. The Mirari Conjecture is secretly maybe the single most important piece of the entire deck. But Mirari Conjecture is sweet because it can also recur our different sweepers and removal elements. The deck doesn't actually play a whole lot of them, but given the fact that it's going to play its removal pieces more than once in a game due to Mirari Conjecture, it actually helps us sort of extend our removal package in that way. So we're going to take a look at these. We're going to play three copies of Settle the Wreckage, two copies of Cleansing Nova, and three copies of Vraska's Contempt. Now Vraska's Contempt is really sweet if we have a mastery out because we get to draw two extra cards off of it. But the sweepers are arguably more important. You're going to want to cast a Cleansing Nova or a Settle the Wreckage multiple times in a game. Mirari Conjecture is what allows us to do that. In fact, with a Conjecture, we can return both a Settle the Wreckage on one turn and then a Cleansing Nova the next turn. So really, the deck is just seeking to relentlessly sweep the board until it can get a mastery in place. You know, sometimes you'll go fourth turn Settle, fifth turn Cleansing Nova, and the next turn you'll hit a Mirari Conjecture so you can collect those cards back up, you know, and just really dash your opponent's hope of ever really establishing a good board state, at which point you can turn the corner, take the game over, slam a Lich's Mastery down, and just start beating face, taking extra turns, and eventually drawing into a win condition. The deck also plays two copies of Mastermind's Acquisition. This was also in my Lich's Mastery build. Um, 
because it just makes sense. You know, this can search up in this deck, obviously, the Lich's Mastery, if that's what you need. But there's all kinds of plays you can make with an acquisition in here. And it's actually one of the more important cards in the deck, too. You know, this can go and get a Conjecture, if that's what you need during that point of the game. You can also do the old trick where you, you know, fourth turn acquisition to guarantee a Sweeper on turn five. That's really important, too. Um, once this is in the graveyard, Mirari Conjecture can then recur it back to your hand once you're able to get a Sorcery back in your hand. Um, sometimes you'll even double it on those chapter three turns, but the cool thing is this can go get a conjecture and then come back to your hand when you get that conjecture in play. So there's just all kinds of cool plays, not to mention the fact that this is very often going to go into your sideboard and get you a Lyra Dawnbringer, a Carnage Tyrant, a Banefire to end up winning the game on the spot. You can also go get Chance for Glory if that's what you want, start taking extra turns and such. But there's also a really cool trick where we go get a Nature Spiral out of our sideboard. This is sweet tech right here, you guys. So listen up, this is one of the coolest tricks in the deck. You can go get a Nature Spiral out of your, out of your sideboard with a Mastermind's Acquisition and then use that Nature Spiral to recur a, a Mirari's Conjecture. Put that back in your hand. Um, then you play your Mirari's Conjecture and use that to put the Nature Spiral back in your hand. Chapter 3 on, um, on Mirari Conjecture, put it in your graveyard. Play Nature Spiral, get it back, then get it, you know, Nature Spiral back with the Conjecture again. So it's just kind of like never-ending loop if you have enough turns to actually make it work. It just allows you to keep getting back, you know, removal, sweepers, you know, gain life spells and stuff like that. Chances for glory over and over. You know, it's just a really, really cool loop. And the Nature Spiral can look a little bit weird, just a one copy of Nature Spiral in the sideboard um, when you haven't really seen the deck played. But once you're, you know, hip to that loop, it's actually one of the coolest tricks available to the deck. Now, I've talked about life gain spells a couple of times in this deck tech already, so I want to go ahead and talk about those. The first is the four copies of Gift of Paradise, which is just insanely important for the deck. You know, we don't have a lot of early game plays, if you haven't noticed. So this is a way to sort of negate the combat step of our opponent on turn two or three, you know, they're usually only going to do a few damage to us. So this is sort of a fog for an early game combat step that also ramps us into mastery or sweeper or whatever. Um, a Mirari Conjecture, if that's what we want. The ramp is actually really important. And it fixes our mana, which is important too, you know. We have a really weird mana base in the deck. I can't wait to cover that monster. <laughs> but obviously Lich's Mastery costs three black mana and its casting cost. And we're trying to play four other colors in the deck too. So Gift of Paradise is super important for fixing our mana, getting whatever color we need at any given time. And... Of course, once we do have Mastery down, we play Gift of Paradise, we draw three cards, which is sort of a tertiary effect. Don't get too hung up on it. Usually Gift of Paradise on turn three, just from watching Ollie play the deck, appears to be the correct uh, thing to do. But once you do have a Gift of Paradise, I mean, there's a reason there's four in the deck. Once you do have a Gift of Paradise in your hand while Mastery's out, drawing three and gaining three is, that's, that's a, obviously a very good play to have. But the deck also plays four copies of Revitalize, which looks like the worst card in the entire deck. But again, there's a reason that there are four copies of this. This actually showed up in a Jeskai control list over the last weekend, too. So it's almost like we should start taking the card seriously, maybe. <laughs> Just like Gift of Paradise. Um, this sort of negates an early game combat step from an aggro opponent and gets us a turn closer to turning the corner and actually sticking the big cards that we need in the mid and late game to, you know, win the game, turn the game around. So I can see why Revitalize makes sense even in a deck that's not trying to play a weird Lich's Mastery combo Mirari Conjecture thing. <laughs> you know, it's showing up in more traditional control decks now. And that's because even more traditional control decks just want to get to the point in the game where they can play their Teferi and stick it or, you know, get to the point where they can explosion you for the win, you know, in the very late game. And a card like this allows us to do that. It gives us a free turn, kind of. It's almost a time walk in the early game. It's also instant speed, so you can just play it at the end of your opponent's turn and it's kind of free in that way. Um, it replaces itself, so it's kind of free in that way. <laughs> Revitalize is a fine card even outside of a concept like this, but in this deck, it's great. You know, it extends the game to where you can actually get down your Haymaker cards. And once you do have a Mastery out again, this just draws you three cards, which is awesome. Did I say three cards? Actually, it draws you four cards. <laughs> so it's just unbelievable once you do have Mastery down, but it's fine to play at the end of your opponent's turn while you're trying to get to Mastery too. So again, the reason that there's four copies of the card, it's really effective. 
Now, the deck plays a card advantage slash card selection suite that's mostly one ofs and then one four of. But let's cover these real quick. Just a one copy of Divination to start things off. It is usually not the correct um, play to play this on turn three. Against some decks, you will, um, especially if you need you know the proper lands on, on the next couple of turns. You know, if you need the lands to get to a Cleansing Nova, for instance, then sometimes you'll play this on turn three. But it's a, it's a one of for a reason. You know, sometimes you'll get this in the late game and. And it's great just as a, a form of card advantage, just straight up card advantage for a relatively low cost. Yeah, just the one copy of Divination, I think that's the right number because we're also making room for one copy of Chemister's Insight. Some of these are just concessions against the control matchup because it's obviously a very bad matchup. Especially against uh, you know, a Jeskai player who's, who's wise to what we're trying to do. Um, that can be a very difficult matchup, probably the worst one for the deck. Deck also plays one search for his Kanta because we're going to be going really, really late into the game anyway. Or at least we plan on it. You know, it's a very slow, grindy deck. Bides its time a lot, you know. So we're going late and search for his Kanta will almost always flip over, at which point it's just the most ridiculous card advantage engine in the entire format. You know, this can find Chance for Glory. It can find Sweepers for us if that's what we want in the late game. Masterminds, Acquisitions and such. There's just no end to the really important cards in the deck that we want to find in the late game, this is the best way of doing so. But the deck plays a full four of Discovery Dispersal. This card is really making its way in standard. A lot of decks I've seen lately are, you know, going up to the full four of this card, and I can see why. The first half of it, the sort of preordained half, is going to be great for finding the spells that you need to find. Obviously, we're digging for a few different things. You know, sometimes we'll need a chance for glory, sometimes we'll need a mastery, sometimes we'll need a sweeper, sometimes we'll need a conjecture, you know, it's just, sometimes we'll need an acquisition. I mean, we never know. So this is a great way of digging for cards. That said, dispersal isn't a bad card either. You know, this is removal pieces, you know, nine through 12 in this deck. Um, the deck looks like it has a pretty weak removal suite, although the removal pieces we are playing are some of the best in the format. This just gives us a little bit more stretch and is particularly good sometimes against cards like you know, Carnage Tyrant, Vine Mare for that matter. So the second half of this actually has a ton of play, but the first half is what you'll be casting the most often. But the last card in the main deck I want to cover here is uh, Expansion Explosion. There's just one copy of this, and it's actually the only main deck way of winning the game, <laughs> for the most part. Of course, Acquisition can go into our sideboard and get win conditions, which is usually what a Masterminds Acquisition deck does, you know. In a way, cards are protected if they're in their sideboard. They can't be milled into our graveyard or exiled in any kind of way, you know. Um, so I can understand the reason for doing that, but Expansion Explosion is a main deck way of closing things out if you've got no other way of doing it. In the very late game, and again, this deck wants to go late anyway, um, Explosion just wins the game in one shot for you. But this is also, keep it on the low, kind of a counter spell, you know? I've seen Ali use this a couple of times to counter counter spells. Um, the most common thing to copy with this is Chance for Glory. But very often, this is just going to finish the game off in the late game if you kind of don't feel like acquisitioning for a Banefire. Now here's this monster of a mana base here, you guys. It's so big I had to give it its own card. Um, and I'm not going to question things here. You know, Ali is the master of five color mana bases. Uh, and this has all the sources that we logistically need, especially with um, Gift of Paradise in the deck to help fix our mana. Um, it looks like a pretty low amount of black sources to actually get mastery down. But again, you know, we're going really late. We don't have to cast mastery on turn. We've got Gift of Paradise to help us play it. So we really only need you know, 13, 14 black sources, which is exactly where we are. Aside from that, the deck needs blue sources, which again, it has plenty of. It needs green sources for Gift of Paradise. It has enough to get that on turn three. So the deck actually looks, the, the mana base at least, looks like a masterpiece <laughs> as far as all of our given sources. It even plays a copy of Gateway Plaza to kind of shore things up. I really like this mana base. I'm not going to question it too much. Ali is definitely a thousand times the, the magic player I am, and he's got to be better with mana bases. So just... Here it is. I'm not going to call it into question too much. <laughs> but here's the sideboard, and I've already covered most of these cards, honestly. There's that Nature Spiral I was talking about, but there's also Lyra Dawnbringer to finish the game off against um, aggro decks in game two and three, but we can acquisition for this and um, guarantee it on turn five, which is really, really sweet against aggro decks. Um, Carnage Tyrant against the control matchup, which is basically um, our worst matchup, and we're trying to shore that up as much as we can. So all three copies of Carnage Tyrant plus a Banefire. Um, which ends the game against control decks as well. We've also got Duress in there to get nasty cards out of their hand. Thief of Sanity is a good card against them. And in fact, we can just transform into a more mid-rangey kind of deck, you know, um, in games two and three. Thief of Sanity, Knight of Autumn are in there. 
Um, I'd like to see Vivian Reed in this deck, to be honest. But again, I'm not going to question things. Knight of Autumn is a, is a, is a beater, if nothing else. Um, and can get rid of artifacts and enchantments, too, just like Viv Reed can, obviously. Um, there's also a definite Clarion in there against the aggro matchup, but we're not as concerned about the aggro matchup as we are the control matchup. That said, we do need, you know, another quick sweeper to get down on turn three sometimes, and Deafening Clarion is honestly good enough on turn six if that's when we draw it. We can also acquisition for this and guarantee it on turn five if we want to, but in that situation we'd usually want Cleansing Nova. It all depends on what we've got the mana for, though, and that's the important part. Now, normally, this is where I'd talk about the cards you could play in the deck, um, and I'd give you the power rankings and all that stuff, but I actually don't have a whole lot of commentary on those things here. Again, I haven't played that much of this deck, um, so I wouldn't, again, feel comfortable assigning power rankings. It feels like a mid-60 to me, but that's feelings don't really matter. Although, that's kind of all power rankings boil down to in the first place. <laughs> you know, usually, they're the result of a lot of testing, and I haven't been able to do that. I have, however, watched Ali play a bunch of games with this deck, and I suggest, if you're interested, in it, that that's the next step that you take. Um, because Ali is obviously the master of the deck. There's a lot of gameplay of this deck online over the last week, but he's the one you want to watch. He's got plenty of, you know, mods on his Twitch, um, and he still streams the deck occasionally, for that matter. But there's plenty of gameplay of Ali playing the deck, and that's what you want to be watching. Because um, it really it really shows you how good the deck can be in the hands of an experienced pilot. I've seen a lot of people just poo-poo this deck because it looks like it just folds to the Jeskai Control matchup, especially Jeskai Control that's running two or three Cleansing Nova. Because um, Cleansing Nova obviously just loses the game. We're not even carrying the gate in the sideboard to counter a Cleansing Nova, um, which I'm a little bit surprised by too. Um, but that, all that being said, um, I have seen Ali beat Jeskai Control with the deck, and Jess, he actually had to beat two Jeskai Control decks to win the Classic. So <laughs> just that, that tells you a lot right there. Um, it also looks like the deck is very bad in the Mono Blue Tempo matchup, uh, but that deck is only about 3 or 4% of the meta right now. Um, that said, it does look like a very, very difficult matchup. But the deck is very good against Green Black, um, which a lot of people bought into at the beginning of the format. Um, and just most, you know, uh, mid-range matchups, like the red-white mid-range Angels deck, uh, the deck is really good against. Anything it can sweep the board continuously against until it can get its places and in, in pieces in place, um, it tends to be really, really good against. Um, almost gimme matchups, you know? So if you're in a format, in a local meta, that or you expect a meta at your next event, that's, you know, mostly mid-rangey decks. This is a great pick against them, but if you're mostly in a Jeskai meta, um, or a mono blue meta for that matter, um, the deck is kind of a rough pick, but it can win those matchups. I don't think it's 50-50 or anything, but it can crawl through and fight its way through those matchups. Again, it's, it's a tough row to hoe, but the deck has demonstrated um, that it can do it. Results don't lie. So, again, Ali had to beat two Jeskai control decks in the last couple of rounds to win the Classic. So, the deck can do it, um, even against people that know what it's up to, you know, and, and experienced players. So, I hope you give this thing a shot. It is the most expensive deck, I think, that I've covered on the channel um, this season so far. It's about 425 to build this deck on TCG Player, but if you try to build it on any other side, it's going to be like $500. So, click the first link in the description down there and check out this deck list. Again, check out um, gameplay of Ali trying it out. Um, you can find that on his Twitch streams. Um, you can find it some of it here on YouTube, for that matter. So go out in search of, of Ali's content, because if you want to see the deck played in the hands of a master, of the guy that built it in the first place and has been building five-color decks forever, then check out those videos, because um, this is a really interesting deck. Again, it's been a while since I've covered somebody else's deck, but I had to I had to cover this deck, you guys. <laughs> I love Lich's Mastery. I love the stupid, like, infinite turns almost loop that you can take with it. You know, in a way, this deck kind of feels like... um. The, the, the Nexus of Fate deck, um, which I know everyone hates, but it's a lot cooler than the Nexus of Fate deck. <laughs> you know, it's got a lot of cool combos in it and stuff, a lot of recursive elements, a ton of resilience. And so I really hope you try this thing out, if, not, if nothing else, proxy it up and get a few games in with it because it's one of the most fun decks to pilot in the entire format. So click the first link in the description, go, to, go over there to TCG Player, try the deck out if you can. And with that, I'm pretty sure I'm tapped out, you know? there's I, I can't actually cover all the tricks this deck has in one video or we'd be here for like three hours. So let me know down there in the comments how you felt about it, any tricks that I missed, because um, I'm sure there's a couple. I, I literally can't cover them all. And if you have any suggestions for making the deck better, you know, again, you give those 
in the comments section. This is a deck that's obviously, um, even though it's built by a guy who this is the kind of deck he builds, and he's a perennial pro competitor, um, the deck is definitely in a state where it could be improved upon, I would say. I'm, t I'm so bold as to say. So give us your suggestions down there in the comments and do all the other stuff. You know, Like the video if you enjoyed the content. Um, share if you want to. A lot of people need to know about this deck and want to know about this deck. So share the video around. Follow me on Twitter at SVMTGDev. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet for more deck techs. Or go over there to the Patreon and throw me a dollar a month. I'd really enjoy if you did that because you can get to know um, what decks we're doing the day before we do them. And you can participate in polls to vote on what decks you want to see next in the first place so you can affect youtube history itself for just a buck a month get over there and help me out if you possibly can every dollar really really helps with that i guess i'll catch you cats later i'm deb from the place thanks for watching my wizards spread love and be kind